I was interested in movie sets and studios in the, in the deserts outside of Los Angeles. And one night I was just, you know, randomly looking on the internet for information about that. And I saw these pictures and I said, that's really amazing. I wonder, is that in Santa Clarita? Is that in Palmdale? And so I, you know, went to the site and it was in Morocco and I was flabbergasted. So I got in touch with David and said, I have a project from Morocco. I want to see these movie sets because they were so spectacular. And Most of my work is not really preconceived to any great degree. I see something when I'm out. And then when I got here, of course, to drive from Marrakesh to Warzaz, I, I started noticing these little roadside stands, the, the, the barracas. And um, so that became a kind of second project. I'm not sure what initially caught my eye, except that there's this kind of very basic, handmade, temporary-looking idea of shelter. In this case, tied with an economy, which is also interesting to me. But I also thought, if someone like me comes to Morocco, and, and everything is so amazing and visually exciting and that, and I don't want to just be reduced to photographing the exotic to me. And I thought the, the barracas, once I started thinking about them, it seemed to me like maybe this is something that nobody sees because it is so small and common and banal. And I think a lot of my work is about that, like trying to suggest something big by looking at something small. What first caught my eye was the Egyptian city stuff because I had, early in my career, I had photographed faux Egyptian architecture in North America, specifically movie theaters built in the Egyptian style. And I was interested in that. <laughs> Atlas is really diverse. So the pictures I made were more improvisational like, because of the visual complexity of the site. The CLA site was much more homogenous. I, I photographed a lot of the doorways and it was, so it was possible to do a kind of, to have a kind of typological approach to that site that would not have been easy at the Atlas. And in fact, it would have been contrary to what that place was about. In some sense, they're the same thing, but they're also very different. I'm responding to those differences sort of, sort of on my feet as, I, as we go. Uh, and then, of course, the Tifula, the interior was incredibly uh, complex. And because, also because we were there quite late in the day, the light was incredibly dramatic.
sort of came upon this other site that was completely hidden and very, very, very strange. It was in a deep depression. And unlike the Atlas and the CLA studio we visited, the entire set was built for a single film. There's a lot of abstraction going on, not just with the camera work, but obviously, you know, I'm shooting monochrome, it's black and white, so it's monochromatic. Um, you know, I'm ma making prints in a certain manner, um, and it's all, it's a kind of reduction and an abstraction. Regarding, like, the kind of unreality of the sets or the fictional quality of it, um, that gets further complicated in the in the photograph because the black and white print complicates further the relationship between the kind of fiction and fact of the site. And of course the photographs I'm making play with the history of photography. There's a lot of, a lot of 19th century photography was made in near and Middle East and, and Northern Africa of quote ruins, but of course they were real ruins. I didn't want to photograph like indigenous Moroccan architecture because I don't have an understanding of that. but. This one was so appealing because it both was and wasn't. Uh, that's what was interesting to me. You know, there's also this very strange sense of abandonment. Like, if it was a real place where people lived, it seemed like they left in a hurry. You know, uh, most ruined towns and that, you have a sense of a gradual collapse. But this seemed fast. And I guess that's what gave it that kind of eerie quality that, that attracted me. When I'm photographing, especially outside, especially when I'm alone, I realized later that I was thinking of nothing else but what I was doing. It's, it's kind of exciting, it's, and, and it's addictive too. A lot of people theorize that Western landscape art is about creating a separation between the viewer and the landscape, but I feel really, really there when I'm making those pictures. Uh, whether or not that's in the picture, that's really not for me to say. That's the viewer's problem, but in terms of the process, I don't feel any distance at all. I feel uh, right there. In large part, we know the world through pictures now. In the United States, it's really not an uncommon experience to go somewhere for the first time and feel like you've been there before because you've seen it in movies or on TV. So I guess that's part of the attraction, too, for me here, with the movie stuff in particular. What I know of Morocco, the landscape and the climate is very much like the arid American West, which has been the site of my work for maybe 25 or more years now. and so. So there's this kind of, um, you know, there's this incredible difference, but there's also this very odd familiarity. And so that creates a kind of tension for me that's interesting. In my career, I, in terms of, like, access to a subject, I've done two different things. I've photographed subjects that I've been able to return to again and again and again. And then I've done other things where either through, because of certain kinds of travel problems or permission, you know, like U.S. military installations, for example, I'm only going to go once. And so this second trip to Wars is that was, is like really terrific in that regard because when I was here the first time, I thought it was going to be the only time. And but having this opportunity to return to the same places and at the same time expand the kind of repertoire of those places, it allowed you know I, I allowed me to kind of be a lot precise, I think. And I sort of you know not having seen anything I've done yet, I have the potential to have some sort of resolution here. I mean, I don't feel like, although I would enjoy it, I don't feel like I have any need to return a third time. I might return to the subjects in different places. But I think I've, you know, there's an expression, um, American, actually circus people and traveling 
entertaining people used to use. They, they spoke about burning a town down. It's like you exhaust it, you can't go back. And maybe I've burned this town down in terms of my work. But, but maybe not, because maybe through the concentration on this certain subject, which I identified before I even saw it, um, I've been blind to other things. So we'll see. I would love to continue to photograph in Morocco. I mean, the landscape's amazing, the light's wonderful, the people are very accommodating. But to, to do what I've done in the last week and last year, I think that's it.